And today we're going to take a look at the quick and fast rendering engine that has made its way from a web-based rendering engine solution down to a desktop-based engine. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So today we're taking a look at Light Tracer. Of course, we've talked about this before in the channel. Uh, and it was when this app was strictly web-based, but right now there is now a desktop version which comes with a couple of features that was not available for the web version earlier. So we're going to go through a couple of them while we talk about some things that you guys need to know. So one of the cool things that you need to know right now is you can work with this on the web just in case you don't want to get the desktop version that is presently in beta and it is free so you can get the free beta by simply signing in and once you sign in you'll be able to get registration you know name and also a password which you can use to log in now there's a couple of features that are coming to the native version which you can get now i'll also go through a couple of things which i love about this tool and also some things which i think you guys need to know before you start getting your feet wet with it and of course if you get this tool and get it up and running from the very first start you would probably fall in love with it all right you fall in love with it for some very good reasons first of all it is simple it is straightforward it does not really require complex set of nodes actually it doesn't have any nodes so just in case you're scared of node you're not a node person i think this is the perfect tool for you so we're going to go through and take a look at this app right now but before we do that i think it's worth mentioning that the web version is still available in case you want to try this tool out on your browser before you get to download it just in case you're skeptical about it and again if you want to get this you know to work on your browser you may want to check out how you can configure this before you get it up and running i'd like to give credit to to Dennis and Danila. These two guys have actually come together to make this tool available and they've also come through with this tool by pushing the bounds of this tool from being a web-based tool to now being a desktop based tool which is something I you know I totally love. All right. So with Light Tracer open here, this is the desktop version. You can see that we have a whole lot of similarities with that of the web. So but there are certain things that are quite different. Now one of the cool things that you can find here is the library. So within the library section you can find a couple of shaders and you can apply these things to your model and you can get good with them. Also, you'll be able to work with backplates depending on what you want and you can also see that within this scene uh, editor here you can now easily add floor and you know get some very cool effects in case you're looking for them so like right now we have this entire floor that we can work with and i can simply move this all the way up all the way down depending on what i want to do i can also come over here and just simply press this key which you can find here which simply means delete and you can also see that you can make a duplicate copy of this one you can also show and hide stuff depending on what you want and these are very very cool stuff so let's proceed with something else so if i want to for example i want to change the hdri i can make all of those hdri changes here which is very easy and very convenient as well you can also choose to increase the power and reduce the power depending on what you want to do if you don't for some reason want to get the lights to come out from the hdri you can choose the gradient all right so you can use the gradient i'm just gonna go through and bring this down and you can you know choose the gradient and choose whatever thing that you want to have to power the gradient so i can get this and get this all right so you can get something like this or if you don't want any of those things you just want you know the emission which is what we have directly here you want the emission shader to be what can generate the lights in the scene you can simply switch this to none and you can see this stuff working and i want you guys to see how tremendously fast this thing is all right so you don't don't even need to blink and this is rendered of course this particular version that is available right now leverages off your graphic card so if you're using an nvidia graphic card if you're using an intel an amd of course it leverages of them it is not really graphic card specific you know in terms of which graphic card you should use over which other one you should use but in my case i am making use of the nvidia rtx 5000 which is super cool and super clean because you can see it renders this thing like really 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 fast all right so if you also want to play with the back plates you can see all of the back plates directly here i think it's just you know it makes a lot of sense to add a simple flow so i'm just going to put that flow there can see the shadows which is pretty cool so you can simply come through and play with the backplate as well if you want to get your 
renders transparent you can get them happening like this and you can also notice that you have your shadows within the same transparent section without the floor which is also something very brilliant that they've done here that i really like next thing if you want to get your backplates to become things like images you can also load your images from here so you can load the backplate images from here and you can get very very comfortable with them next off is materials so for the materials there is an entire library right now although this library is still being built over the period of time it is not yet complete but these are like the very basic things that you can get out of this so if i simply select this right now and click on this button i can assign a shader to that now this is extremely simple i like the way that they've broken down things when it gets to do with how you can apply materials all right so in other apps you might have to click drag drop or maybe click right click and say assign or something like that right here you just simply click you go to wherever you want things to be and you just simply click and you that's it you have it there if you want something to be very you know transparent like glass you click you select what you want and boom you have that you want something to be reddish in color you want something to be you know goldish or something like this in color and you can just simply start getting all of this quick result and the way it renders is just interesting if you also want to be able to play with the materials because i know a whole lot of you guys are quite technical you want to play with these things yourself you will probably be able to do those when you come over to the material editor so from here you can see that we have one two and three different phases of how materials or shaders work and you can work with these three phases right now to actually get the best out of what you're looking for so in case you want to work with something glossy for example i want to increase the roughness of this i can actually do that or i want to reduce the roughness of this i can actually do that depending on what i want to do within the glossy side of things you can do that all right if you want to do this within the metal side of things by just simply switching you can see automatically converts it to metal you can also do all of these things here you can also choose to play with the interface which has to do with dielectric and no cutting which actually makes a lot of sense at the same time if you want to make this emissive you can also make this emissive all right so we can switch to a given color and say we want to make this emissive and now if we simply go back to the environment and switch this back to none you can see that this becomes emissive all right so this is just uh, some of those things that make sense so just in case you want to play with these things this is uh i think pretty much this is how you can go with it if you want to convert this to glass it's simple you just go over to the glass section and you can convert this to glass very very cool very easy for you to get going with it so in case you're having issues trying to you know get your renders working with apps like key shots and all that stuff you might probably want to try this one out i mean for now this tool is still in beta which simply means it's totally free although the final version will be coming out i think within the first week of march which makes a lot of sense and if you're considering purchasing this you can see that it's really really cheap so if your goal is to just do renders or visualization of cool stuff that you've made in other apps I think this is going to be like one of the best tools that you can actually lay your hands on the learning curves is very very easy and yeah there is just so much that you can get out of this for rendering let's talk about rendering so for the rendering it makes a lot of sense if you want to work with the camera all right so for the rendering for the camera is really really simple how you can work with the camera so you can choose to work with a pinhole or you can choose to work with a thin lens camera okay so you can work with any of these ones that you want to and for this one you can see that already we have an f number which can actually increase or reduce how much bouquet or how much depth of field that you're going to get at the same time if you want to work with a simple pinhole camera you can also notice that from here we have focal length and sensor height which you can also work with so we did talk about the whole thing that has to do with the camera in the previous video so i'm also going to link that in the description in case you want to check it out for the post effect there is actually not so much but you can find out that you have very cool stuff here that has to do with tone mapping and bloom every other thing here just simply works the bloom is there the denoising like we talked about is there so right now you can see that it's making use of the optics gpu denoiser you can switch this to the real-time denoiser or you can also switch this to the intel denoiser so these are things that you practically want to get to know about this tool just in case you want to start making use of the tool this is quite simple and light and you know if you want to get good with it this is as good as it gets and this is how you can get going with it on the other hand tiny menus here which you can use so in case you want to show hide stuff you can use this on the other hand if you want to export your objects to png of course you can use this as well you can also use this to switch between tile rendering and you know non-tile rendering in case you want to disable that 
this is for your denoising and we've already taken a look at the real time cpu and also gpu and also if you want to turn off the bloom effect which is one of the post process effects that we have here you can also turn this on and off but i kind of think that bloom effect always makes things look awesome so we're going to simply enable that and finally this will take you over to the discord channel where you can see what these guys have been working on and also get cool updates in case you want to work with this tool or maybe you want to speak with your developers on how to best improve this tool and yeah this is definitely about it now i'm going to go through and talk to you guys about certain things which i really wish that the guys from light tracer would actually fix all right so one of the cool things that has been done with this tool is the fact that you can easily you know work with the entire tool like from day one once you download this tool and start using it you pr practically don't need a tutorial to actually get going with this but then i find some things a little bit you know not in place so things that has to do with ctrl z are not available so if i simply click this and move this to this part i cannot undo this i really want to get this button working at least we should have an undo on this tool right now i don't have an undo and it just makes me it just it just breaks my heart all right so there is no undo for this tool for the menus i still wish that we can have a couple of menus so all of these menus that we have here so instead of going all the way here we can actually have a couple of them around here and maybe probably tiled up and stacked up properly for the sampling this sampling looks great i like the fact that you can stop and you know process your renders from here but it would look or make more sense if we can have all of the sampling stuff directly here you know like right here we do have uh samples that has to do with denoising around here let me make sure i have that there gpu all oh, right so right here we have all of the sampling that has to do with denoising maybe we can have the sampling that might have to do with the rendering passes somewhere here all right that ha might have to do with the rendering somewhere here of course i do like the start and stop which makes sense to be where it is but of course i really wish that maybe some of these things can be there one other thing which i also wish that we can have is also grouping so right now there is no grouping to this tool and i really wish that grouping can come over to the tool of course this is more like a visualization tool as it stands right now and it does not by any chance support animation probably this might be something that will be you know that will be done in the future or probably something that they will implement in the future but right now this does not support it and on the other hand i am very very okay with the fact that it doesn't and i just wish that you know some of the things that we've just talked about right now can be fixed so far so good this is a very good app and i would really suggest and you know you know subscribe this app to anyone that wants to try rendering stuff really quick and probably doesn't want to spend so much time tweaking materials or tweaking stuff just to get a cool render out all right so if you want to get this tool go through to the link in the description and get it and that's definitely going to be about it guys i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section and of course if you like this tool or you learned something from this then go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace